Live from the Man Cave, Treadmills and Tangents with Coach Aaron Saron and his army of wellness warriors. Live in discussion of all things health and wellness, along with community topics they happen to stumble upon. And good morning, Omaha. Coach coming at you again, live from the Man Cubby with this edition of Treadmills and Tangents, your health and wellness show right here on The Answer, 94.5 FM, 1420 AM. I am flying solo today, mostly because that I unfortunately uh, am not necessarily the bearer of bad news, but just the bearer of news, and that this will be our last and final episode of Treadmills and Tangents. We uh, started this show roughly six, eight months back at the turn of the year with the idea of bringing some new content to the answer with some health and wellness and some fun banter. Uh, We originally started this show as a podcast talking mostly martial arts, stemming from the topics that our students down at Mid-America Martial Arts wanted to hear, and we would weave in some health and wellness as well. Uh, We have an opportunity through our good friend Michelle Truax, and I definitely want to thank Michelle for offering this opportunity to us to bring our content to the answer uh, and to a wider audience. Um, We unfortunately have just decided that it's time to to move on and and get back to our roots and get back to more of a martial arts oriented show uh, that maybe better fits in our wheelhouse. I do want to thank some people. I do want to thank Nick Burris, uh, first of all, our, our studio editor and, and producer, for helping us with the show. He provided us a lot of, of insight and knowledge and how to do a radio show and, and some tips and things to do to help us out there. I do want to thank Chip Maxwell, always a gracious host when we had us on uh, his show. Chip's such a great guy, and, and the answer is lucky to have him. I love his show. Incredibly knowledgeable and, and such a fun show to listen to. I've always enjoyed being on there, and I want to thank Chip for having us and, and giving me an opportunity to spread the word about our show and, and get some health and wellness out to a, a larger and wider audience. And I do want to thank uh, Miss Jackie Marr for helping us bring this to a close uh, in a respectable way. And um, again, we are not parting uh, the answer in any hard feelings whatsoever. Um, uh, the new owners of Walnut Radio are super great people. Uh, we just felt this was time for us to move on and, and get back to our roots and get back to more of a martial arts and, and fitness oriented type show. So we're going to resurrect our podcast uh, and take that route as well. So I, I do want to thank everybody for listening and for the inputs that you had given us and the feedback and, and just, you know, and just tolerating us at certain times when a bunch of guys just getting on the radio and having some fun and talking health and wellness. I hope you enjoyed the show and, and look forward to running to everybody somewhere along the way. Look for our podcast. That'll be Mid-America Martial Arts, a martial arts podcast. And, uh, and I hope to see everybody again in the near future. So until then, what I'm going to do is, is play one of my favorite episodes that we did on nutrition and and neglect and and if i think child abuse and nutrition fall in the same category uh it, it's a hot topic but i think it's something everybody really needs to hear especially parents and how important nutrition is and health and wellness for a child starting out just to set the, the tone for life and set the tone and and, and good habits going forward so again, I, I bid you farewell. Thank you very much. Treadmills and Tangents was an incredibly fun show for us to do. I thank The Answer and their hospitality and giving us the opportunity uh, to be on the radio on 94.5 FM and 1420 AM. So I hope to see you around the block. Uh, be healthy, be well, most importantly, be happy. And good morning, Omaha. This is Coach coming at you live from the Man Cubby. I'm my co-pilot today is Sam the Man. How are we doing? What's going on? Good. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, Sam, good. What, what's new, man? What's uh, what's going on over at the High V? High V, just working a lot. It's been busy. It's been crazy busy. It's been so, good. Sales are good right now. People are what's, uh, wanting to eat healthy. What's trending in the organic section right now, man? Keto's huge. Is it? Keto so, is, is flying right hopefully now. Hopefully due to our preaching of it. I, I'm hoping. I mean, I got, a, I got like a whole section for keto supplements and stuff now i mean it's getting huge what are people buying i mean are they so like they got keto meals kind of like ones that we sell at the gym they got keto pills that are supposed to help with that um ex- ex- the exothermic ketones yeah sure. you know mct oils are pretty big right now too mct oils yeah, yeah. for the, for the uh bulletproof coffee yep. the bullet bulletproof coffee is huge too they got a whole line of bulletproof coffees bulletproof bars Ready to drink coffee? Now, drink. do you see any of that? Is that mostly staying in the organic section, yes. or do you see it starting to infiltrate? Throughout the store. No, right now it's mostly standing in the organic section. It hasn't infiltrated into the store yet. Although I'm 
I'm sure like everything else, some at some point it's going to become so mainstream that it probably will. Which is funny because there's nothing organic about some of that stuff. I know. Nothing at all. Or- organic's just-, just becoming the catch-all for yep. health food. Yep. Well, like we stated before, you know, organic is, you know, you can... If you pay the money, you can put that label on anything. Just about you know, anything. Pretty much. I, I grow organic eggs at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I'm not really sure. They are free range. Well, free though. range. So they you are got free that. range. And uh, I'm not sure what they're fed. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is. Whatever whatever feed I give them. Yeah. I don't know how you would classify it. <laughs> now, I'm always interesting. I love walking around when I go to the store. I'll get what I need to buy. And then I just kind of shop for myself i'm more just browsing to see what's out there i'm always curious what new stuff that's on the shelves and i notice energy drinks are as popular as oh, ever energy drinks are flying i mean i'm sure everyone's aware of bang bang is sure it's crazy. huge that's I kind mean, of the I most saw, popular one uh, right now it is and there's a new one that i saw recently that i'm curious about it's called spike it's supposed to help with like brain promote you know help memory and all that well i noticed that so. there, there there's a kind of shift like energy is just assumed and now it's like what else can we get yeah. in the can you yeah. know as a brain function it's you know recovery it's you know whatever happens to be and what else can we get in the can i also noticed that sparkling waters seem to be huge oh sparkling waters have grown exponentially uh within the last year i mean god we've expanded we went from maybe eight feet in an aisle to probably 36 feet. Now, I've personally last... been kind of experimenting with sparkling waters. I, I was never a fan of them because, you know, yeah. I mean, first of all, you know, sparkling water, tonic water, um, seltzer, I don't know what the heck the difference is between <laughs> them, um, you know, other than a nice gin tonic maybe once in a while. But, you know, for the most part, the sparkling water is just, I never really had a palate for them, but in an attempt to, to cut out sugar in my diet and just and have something to drink that's a little bit healthier and not as sugary, you know, I've been kind of playing around with different sparkling waters. And, um, you know, there's some really good ones that are starting to come out, but you got to be careful. Like I had a, an Izzy, is that what it's called? Yeah, Izzy. And I, I happened to grab that at a gas station. I was like, wow, that was really good. And I was, I couldn't remember the name of it. So I kept searching and kept searching and I found them in high V and then I, of course, I turned the can around, yep. and now I realized it was really good because yep. there's like 30 grams of sugar in the darn thing. Yeah, you gotta be, you do got to be careful about it, that. A it's lot in the form that. of fruit juice, yeah. but I was like, oh, well, that explains why it was so good. Yeah, and, and the ones that typically are good have a lot of the, the fruit juice. Like LaCroix, for instance, is not a very tasty. It's so popular, though. So popular, sure, but it's not a very good one. But. I just tried Bubbler. Bubbler, yeah. That's it was pretty good. It was pretty that good. That is by far the best one I think people are liking that's probably got the least amount of sugar in it. Yeah, there's only like six or eight grams yeah. of sugar in it. And, uh, but, you know, it, it was pretty good. And, uh, the flavors were pretty good. It didn't have like, for me, a lot of the sparkling waters have like a, a bitey aftertaste yes. that just, yes. like it, it tastes good going down and then it just like. Just a little bitter. A little, like ugh. like a something, yeah. you know, did something to your tongue yeah. that I probably can't say on <laughs> Yeah, I mean, air. you do got to be careful with some because a lot of them are the pop companies are coming out with them. Oh, so, wow. Like Bubbler, um, I believe. Well, for the most part, like the pop companies own everything. Yeah. There's only like two companies that own everything. Yeah, <laughs> you got you got Dr. Pepper, you got Pepsi and Coke. But I mean, you know, they, they're they the ones that are coming out with the thing. Like Coke, Pepsi's got bub, the bubbly now. That, the bubbly. The bubbly. Oh, yeah, I've had that. That's good. Yeah, that that's not bad. Good. And it, it's not, It's it, that's competed with LaCroix. So that's and Dasani not, has a sparkling water out too. It's pretty good. It. Yeah, everyone, it's everywhere. It's so huge right now. It's interesting, it's uh, and it's. Just, it, I mean, I think it's good. You know, just having having low sugar options are yeah. good just across the board, and and anything that can take the place of just pop. Although I'm I'm sure pop still just sells like crazy. It, it does. It is still a draw in the stores. I mean, that's why I see in the ads all the time. I, I can't believe how many people come in for well any time like clockwork when when football season starts yep. I know that big display of, of Coke and Pepsi yep. or Mountain Dew is going to be up yep. front like Fourth of July it looks like stuff. the Great yep. Wall <laughs> gets built <laughs> it is because they'll they'll run those ads but man I'm I can't believe how many people come in for those for that stuff anymore I, I just can't. It's, it's on a decline don't get me wrong but it's still a big draw I think it's like it, it's where smoking was. Maybe 20 years ago. Yeah. Right. So, you know, everybody knew smoking was bad, but not enough people bought into it. And now we had an entire generation that had grown up being told smoking is bad for you. Yeah. Now you just don't see it as much. Like it's not, uh, out, not at all. It's illegal now to smoke. I mean, I remember when it wasn't illegal to smoke in public. I remember we could smoke oh, on I airlines. That too. It wasn't, it honestly wasn't that long ago. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I, I think it'll take something as drastic. Like we know some states are trying to ban sugary drinks. Uh, as choices on yeah. menus, you can't ban it outright because right. you can't tell people what they can. I guess you could ultimately, 
But I, I, it gets a little scary when you get told what you can yeah. eat and what you cannot eat. Uh, but I think, you know, if they start putting regulations like they did on big tobacco, like you can't advertise anymore, right. uh, I think that will start to change public opinion towards more of the sparkling water. I would agree with that. And that would, that would be, I mean, detrimental to those companies. If they oh, jeez. You know, that'd be... I mean, imagine the sponsorships that they'd have to get out of if they couldn't advertise more. They well, it wouldn't be it'd be on sports. They probably couldn't advertise. I remember that. auto racing. You know, I'm I'm a big race fan, and all the tobacco companies were big time yeah. sponsors, and the beer companies were big time sponsors. And then when a lot of those laws came out that they couldn't advertise like that, they just disappeared. So you know, I mean, that, but you know, for the health of the general public, uh, that's probably a good yeah. thing at the end of the day. But I mean, they got enough enough like the sparkling water and stuff out there they could probably start advertising that to make up for it well, i think it's just a shift become, right yeah. it's a shift I, I noticed gatorade has been experimenting yeah. for a limited time yeah. with gatorade zero and to be honest to me i think that's just a market experiment to see hey do enough people want zero sugar stuff yeah. and well, i think that's why they only have the two flavors too because it yeah. is just a marketing thing right yeah now. yeah it was well, a traditional uh Orange and the lemon lime, if I remember. And then they have a, a glacier cherry or something. I but they, one, yeah. they went with traditional, but it's flying off the shelf. It Everywhere is. I go, it's selling like crazy. So I, I'm willing to bet they start rolling out other flavors oh, yeah. and slowly just convert the entire line to sugar-free. It's fruit. good. I've tried the orange. I like it. And I'm willing to bet, because I don't know if you know, in, in Seattle, uh, they put that tax huh. on sugar drinks. Yep. And, and it's based on per ounce and per gram of sugar. Yeah. So like... A case, for example, like if you go to Sam's Club, a case of Gatorade costs like 13 or 15 bucks. But like up in Seattle, it's like $35 oh my God. because of the tax on it. It's something ridiculous. So I'm willing to bet that that's in direct response because it's all about bottom line, right, right. for those companies. Oh, yeah. And now if they can come out with something that tastes exactly the same, and, and it's genius. Zero sugar, all the electrolytes. Yeah. What more could you want? And I can see them seeing that shift going to other states too. So I can see them preparing for it. So you know it. why not? And and what's really flavoring? They can come out with all their flavors oh, yeah. and zero sugar Easy. and completely rep- replace their line, which is I think where a lot of uh, manufacturers will go. Now I think it's a little bit easier for like Gatorade. I mean, there's I couldn't taste any difference between oh, regular I, Gatorade and the zero. I take none. And then they've had G two out for a long yeah. time, but unfortunately with with uh, with the with I almost said Coke products because that's my East Coast coming out. What kind of Coke do you want? Um, with the pop products, like you can taste a difference right now. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I like Coke Zero. I don't mind it. I think it's about as close as you can get to real Coke. I honestly, I haven't had a pop in years. Yeah. I can't remember. Once the last in a while, a I'll get a craving. Like if it's like a hot, hot day and I'm really thirsty, I'm like, man, a Coke would taste good right now. The last one I last pop I probably had might have been a Sprite. Might have been. I, it's been years. Yeah, stuff like that know. tastes so sweet to me oh, now. God. It's ridiculous. It, uh, it's amazing when you remove something like that from your diet, how your palate just changes. Just, yeah, it's just over. And here, here's a great here's a great story. I was at a birthday party. Uh, one of my one of my students, uh, one of my private students, he takes privates from me. Um, his name's Lee. He's actually the owner of. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm brain dumping. <laughs> Yamada Sushi, terrible. Uh, so everybody go check out Yamada Sushi. It's, the, sushi it's the only place. sushi train oh, so in town. Good. Which if you go to Japan, there's sushi trains everywhere. Is there? Uh, oh yeah, all over the place. They're not quite as nice and they're uncovered. So <laughs> the health, so not, the health not standards as, aren't quite yeah, as high. Say. But you know, there's sushi trains everywhere. But yeah, there's one downtown right off of uh, 72nd Street, 72nd Pacific there. But check it out, the uh, Yamada Sushi. But I was at uh, his daughter's birthday party, and his wife made this beautiful birthday cake. It was beautiful. And it was really ornate. It was from Frozen. And it had all this really nice icing on it. And she cut the cake, and you could see it. she had put fruit in with the cake itself. Ooh. And then I tasted it. And I don't know if he had, like, traditional, like, Chinese or Japanese. Or just, they're not very sweet. And, and what I thought was going to be icing, it was this really light um, cream Almost, not like a meringue, but just like a light cream icing. It was not sweet at all. And I thought it was awesome. The cake was really light. The icing wasn't really sweet. It was just really nice and light. That sounds good. And all the adults were like, this is great. And the kids were like, this is gross. <laughs> right? And it made Leave me it laugh. Kids. But it made me laugh because it just goes to show how over-sugared yep. our kids are. Right? And they're like, this is disgusting. And like all the adults were like, this is the best cakes ever. And it was awesome. But... You know, this kind of leads into what I want to talk about today, just how over-sugared our kids are. And 
you know, childhood obesity is such a problem right now and such an epidemic in the last few years. And I, I brought up, you know, some statistics that I wanted to share with everybody. And this is from the Center from the Center of um, Disease Control and Prevention. And, and they show that since the 1970s, that childhood obesity and, and adolescent obesity has more than tripled. And from 2015 to 2016, a uh, study shows that nearly one in five school-aged children are obese. Oof. I mean, that's one huge. In that's, one that's in ridiculous. five. Okay, you know, and that's based on body mass index, which isn't a huge, hugely accurate indicator. But at that age, it's a pretty, good, it's a pretty good indicator at that yeah. age. You know, we we understand it's just a height to weight ratio, but you know, people who have a lot of lean body mass, it tends to not categorize it very well. But that's not really the case with kids. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, the problem is, is that it's not just that obesity, it's, it's what everything that obesity leads to. And, you know, with type 2 diabetes, joint problems, sleep apnea, just their own self-image, yep. um, and, and a host of other diseases and metabolic diseases come into play to include heart disease later on down the road, uh, starting in childhood obesity. Uh, they also show, uh, you know, they break it out per state. You know, oh, which states are, have the kids that are the fattest? And they showed, that, like, Arkansas, like, 21% of the kids are obese. 21%. Yeah. You know, that, that was the highest. You know, Tennessee came in at 20.5. Kentucky, 20.2. West Virginia, 19.5. Texas, 18.6. South Carolina. So a lot of the southern states where there's a lot of fried foods, go yeah. figure, <laughs> um, tend, hmm, tend to be surprise. obese. Nebraska, uh, 14.6%. I mean, that's not... Um, 21%, now, but it's not great. frighteningly, with, uh, males are higher than females. And we're talking adolescents and child and children here. Uh, the World Health Organization, uh, take it a step further and say it's actually a global epidemic that there's estimated 41 million children that are overweight uh, under the age of five. Wow. Un- Think about that. Under That's the age of five. Sad. And, you know, of course, you know, that, that begs the question of, okay, well... What else does that cause? You know, you got cardiovascular diseases and then insulin resistance, and then it stunts their growth in a lot of cases. It but leads it just to some. Also, it also goes to like mental too, sure. and, you know, stuff like that. People I mean, get who gets picked, picked, picked on? on all the time? The fat kid always gets yeah. picked on. The so fat you know, kid. It, it does more than just physical. Yeah, you know, uh, the World Health Organization says if the trend continues, it's estimated that. Uh, overweight and obese infants and young children will hit nearly 70 million by 2025. Wow. That's insane. And, and that's just around the corner. Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. it is. 20, 2025 is not that far away. Seven years away. Uh, right now, it's estimated there's 41 million in 2016 that are overweight. It's going to hit 70 million in the next I would say it's seven global. years. Uh, and, it, and it's preventable. You know, even the World Health Organization, this is preventable. Yeah. And a lot of this is due to do food choices. And, uh, you know, high calorie foods, high sugar foods that are just rampant in our diets right now. Yep. You know, so, uh, you know, I, I joked, I, I didn't really joke. I, I was serious, but I said it in kind of a snarky manner that I, that I think diet nutrition, poor diet and nutrition is one of the worst forms of child abuse. And, you know, I, I kind of said that off the cuff, but in doing some research, there's actually been a lot of push that it should be considered a form of neglect yeah. and child abuse I mean, straight there's up. there's hundreds of articles out there about oh, it. Oh, hundreds, hundreds. hundreds. And, and, and the more we dug into it, it was like, holy smokes. So let, let's continue with the stats for a second. You know, So along with obesity, generally diabetes comes with it. And, and type 2 being the one, which we, we understand you're generally born with type 1. Type 2 is, is onset later on in life, right. and that's mostly due to poor diet. And, and we know uh, in, in many, many cases you can reverse type 2 with yeah. a good diet. Uh, but check this out. So between 2002 and 2012, the rate of type 2 began outpacing type 1. Oh. Right? Uh, w- which means that we're eating worse and worse. Yeah. And now type 2 is outpacing, which is crazy. Like three times. Uh, it's, and this is not this is in a youth study, uh, a search for diabetes and youth study funded by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. And National Institutes of Health found that from 2002 to 2012 incidents, the rate of new diagnosed cases for type 1 increased by 1.8% each year. During that same period, type 2 cases 
increased 4.8 percent per year. That's three times the Jesus. rate. And this is this is in youth. This is in youth. kids. This yep. is in kids. That's what I. That's, yeah, this is in kids. This is sad. Uh, uh, and it and it's across the board. It's not just. It's across all ethnic groups. So ages 10 to 19, new diagnosed type 2 cases rose sharply in Native Americans by 9%. Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, another 9%-ish. Uh, his Non-Hispanic blacks, 6.5%. Uh, new diagnosed type 2 cases, 3.1% amongst Hispanics. And type 2 rose more sharply in females than in males. Uh, wow, in this case, for type 2. And that's ages 10 to 19. Wow. Wow. So obviously these findings lead to many more questions yeah. as to what's causing this. We, we know diet is probably the main culprit um, causing to have insulin and sensitivity and hyperinsulin. So it, it's, it's crazy that it's out there. Um, and, you know, the main culprit we know is being overweight. And the reason we're overweight is we're... Bad food choices. Yeah, bad food bad, choices. Bad eating, bad, bad food choices. But here's the thing, you know, it's, you know, how are these kids getting these foods? Like, they're not making these choices. I don't know who's putting oh, no. the food in front of them. They're not the ones driving to McDonald's or Or any paying place for it. They don't have the money. So, you know, who's giving yeah. them the food? And, and it comes back to it's the parents, right? Yep. Now, in many cases, you can argue the parents don't know better or it's a societal thing. Well, but come I, on. I, nowadays, with the internet and all this talk about fitness and healthy eating, how could parents not know? Uh, well, there's, there's, you know, just like in medicine, it, dogma is tough to switch. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot That's of people fair. just want to live with their head in the yeah. ground and don't really care what they consider good you know I, being a parent i'll admit there's some times where you just want them to eat anything yeah. they're being so picky you want them to eat everything but to a point right where i've gone in my cupboards and i've played a game with my kids i go hey let's go see uh what how much sugar we have in a cupboard and let's all put it in a box and we cleared out a ton right. and my whole point in doing that with them was Look how much sugar is in there. And we read books about, you know, Berenstein Bear books about eating too much yeah. junk food and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if you're taking your kids to McDonald's every day yeah. just because it's convenient. Right. And and I think that's what a I lot mean, of it is. Come it's the on. convenience. Sure. You know, that oh hey, you know, we gotta we gotta go to the baseball game, we got a football game. McDonald's is right there, we'll just grab some. But you know, come on, you know, every day eating that's not good or you know, just giving them soda instead of water or sparkling yeah, water. For you know, all that. and so we know the number one form of child abuse is neglect, and neglect comes in and by by a landslide. Oh yeah, and, and by a landslide. Even when it comes to physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, like neglect is by in by and large, yeah, uh, number one form of neglect. Now, how do we find neglect? That that's the that's the question. How do you define it? Well, uh, the National Welfare Information Gateway and the Children's Bureau, uh, they they show that neglect is defined. Uh, due to the cap, the C A P T A capped, capta. Wow, I butchered that. Capta. <laughs> I'm tr- I'm trying to better. say the acronym. <laughs> capta, capta. Anyway, uh, which is the law that was uh, passed to uh, define what childhood ab- child abuse is and neglect is, and it, it defines neglect. As frequently defined as a failure of a parent or other person who's responsible for the child to provide needed food, clothing, shelter, medical care, or supervision to the degree that the child's health, safety, and well-being are threatened with harm. Okay, that, that's a pretty broad brush. Yeah. But it, it's pretty specific too. Provided the needed food. Okay, it says right there, the needed food. To the degree the child's health, safety, and well-being are threatened. Okay, so well, for improperly feeding them. Yeah, so th- there's there two you ways you can improperly feed a child. You can malnourish a child, yeah. right? Which, okay, I don't think anybody argues that malnourishing a child is, is horrible yeah. and wrong. And you should go to jail and you should probably burn for that, right? Right. But for some reason, we're hung up to say overfeeding a child is, is, not, is, not, is not wrong, thing. right? Yeah. It's not the same thing. And, and why not? So... We know mal- a, a child can recover from being malnourished in yeah. many... Sometimes, you know, obviously it can be fatal, right? Which right. is terrible. But a child can recover. Uh, you, by overfeeding a child, could condemn them to a life of diabetes. Yeah. Could condemn them to a life of metabolic disease yeah. if you're not careful. And it's not their choice. And it's not their choice. That's, that's the sad part about it. Well, and, and it's, they don't know any better, yeah. right? You just, they'll eat the food that's put in front yeah. of them. If you tell a child that... 
hamburgers and ice cream are good for them, they're going to believe it. Yeah. And I'm a firm, firm believer. I'm a firm believer that whatever you put in front of the child and they become accustomed to eating and they're not exposed to other stuff, they won't they won't know any better. Yeah, they won't know any better. And they if all try. they eat is fresh meat, fresh lean meats, even fatty meats, right? If, yeah. if you want to put them on a keto diet, give them fatty meats, you know, whole real foods, uh, dark leafy green vegetables, yogurts, what, and you never give them sugary foods, sugary yeah. drinks, ice creams. They don't know the difference. Yeah. It's what they're getting is good food and, and they like it and they're going to keep eating yeah. it. They build their palate up to recognize that food and that's what they're going to like. And it's only when you expose them to the junk is when the palate goes, ooh. Yeah. And, and the brain goes, ooh. Yeah. It goes, ooh. Well, it's because sugar's an addictive substance. Yeah. It has the so, same I mean, effect on the brain as cocaine, right? Yeah. And it's so, like, I oh, mean, okay. How is that not, not neglect on a child? Sugar is an addiction. Well, Just, you're, you're exposing a child to a drug. Yeah. I mean, simple as that. At the end of so the day. So what, what would be the difference of, you know, you giving your kid a drug? What's the difference between that and sugar? It's, it, it's, it's not really sugar. in terms it's of been, effect on the brain. Yeah, and, and, effect and, on the brain. Exactly. And establishing a, a poor lifestyle or, or poor healthy or poor eating habits, yeah. I should say. But that, that is going to transfer over to a poor lifestyle to some to Well, extent. they've shown. You know, I mean, studies show that if a child is obese, they tend to be obese as an adult. Yeah. It well, carries yeah. over. It, Habit it, patterns, right? Yeah. It's hard to break habit. Exactly. It's hard to break habit. So, you know, you know, so we found some articles too that that talked about and CAPTA stands for Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act of 1974 uh, <laughs> to to fix my butchering of it. <laughs> um, but there have been cases where we know that uh, obviously people have been convicted for malnourishing a child for neglecting a child in that matter, but there have been cases uh, as recent as as 2012 in which uh, childhood obesity becomes life-threatening and the parents were, in fact, um, criminalized and, and charged for neglect in that manner. So now it's, it's a little trickier because how we define obesity is right. sketchy sometimes that it is. And, and at what point does that become life-threatening to the child? Yeah. I mean, does a child have to be diagnosed as diabetic before you can be considered neglectful of that child? I um, that to me, that point's too late because that's 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 for life. Yeah. So this article from Psychology Today we found says there's been a, there's a long history of children being removed when they have been severely malnourished. However, more recently, some extremely obese children have been removed from the home as well, and to the point where childhood obesity becomes life threatening. And there is a compelling interest to, in preventing harm. The child has been removed from the home. So I think that's a good thing. I, I agree. Um, Furthermore, many parents of obese children are obese themselves. So treating the obese child of obese parents as neglected can have effect of criminalizing obesity among parents. Uh, so here's the thing. There, there's a stigma. You know, there's a stigma where, all right, you know, we, we don't, we're a sensitive society right now. So fat shaming is not good. Right. So we don't want to fat shame. We're supposed to love our body. We're supposed to love our image. But if it's harming children, yeah. like where do we draw the line? Yeah life-threatening i mean i mean you see it all the time you see that when you're out at restaurants you see it all the time and like you you see an overweight parent you look at the children you know or when you see an overweight kid you're just looking for the parents you almost know what they're going to look like well it's funny you say that because that's actually how it is in the store oh yeah i see it all the time you see the kid and you're like oh you, you for the most part, you know what the parent looks like. And, and what aisle are they going down? Uh, they're going just down just the garbage all aisle. The garbage aisles, all the all the middle aisles, the cookies, the juices, the pop, the chips. And, and you look and, at their and, cart, and you're just it's like full of that stuff. What are you telling? What are you yeah. reinforcing with your kid when your cart is just full of garbage? Yeah. Five and, boxes and, of cereal, fruity pebbles. I mean, you name it, they got all that stuff. Ice cream and just oh, junk, and ah. you know, frozen TV dinners. Oh, I found it. an article where the title of the article, this is from 2008, and it said childhood obesity is not a form of abuse. And, and this person basically says public health zealots have no business putting fat kids on the at-risk register. And, and he basically goes into saying that, you know, where do we draw the line? And he comes down and, and at the end of the article it says, uh, in their crusade against childhood obesity, public health zealots would do well to heed the wise words of pediatric experts in this field, 
who recently observed that it is also important to remember that obesity remains extremely difficult for professionals to treat, thus criticizing parents for what professionals are unable to do smacks of hip- hypocrisy. Well, hmm. okay. Unable to treat. That, that, that right there is... That just reeks yeah. of pompous arrogance by medical professionals that don't want to admit that the majority of our problems, that many of our diseases, especially metabolic diseases, are treatable with diet and nutrition, yeah. right? They, because the pills aren't working, they would rather medicate people, they would rather diagnose them as diabetic and put them on insulin, and They'd which get paid. causes a wicked, <laughs> wicked cycle, right? If that is coming from a, a level of arrogance that says, we can treat you well, we can't treat you with diet yeah. or diet war because that will put us out of business to some extent. And that's what he's worried about. Uh, you know, so I, 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 I don't agree with this person. I, I do I, think it's child abuse. Yeah. I, I 100% yeah. think it's in the form of neglect. It's like you are neglecting your child's health by shoveling garbage down their throat. Yeah. And, and you're condemning them to a life of, of, of not just physical poor health, but mental poor health. Mental, I mean, just it's... God, the name you name it. I mean, asthma, diabetes, epilepsy, the mental conditions they can have just just from going to school with the other kids. Now you pulled up an article as well um, from a few years back, and in, in a study, and it kind of takes the same approach yeah. where, hey, you know, it is a form of neglect, but we need to be careful uh, on how we categorize it because now we're condemning parents who are who are merely trying to. Maybe, maybe they don't realize that they're feeding their kids poorly. Right. Uh, they're doing the best they can. And I get it. There, there's a lot of argument for, hey, you know what? The, the, the unhealthy foods are cheaper. Right. Which, yeah, you can buy a truckload of ramen for, I think, 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? a true story. And you can fill the bellies <laughs> uh, of a lot of people with that. And you can fill the belly of your kid for a long time. And bread is cheap. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and and these companies by design have made these high calorie, high sugar foods very cheap. But and, eggs are cheap too. And they're belly fillers. And eggs are pretty good for you. Eggs are incredibly good for yeah. you. And you know, the, yes, the good foods may be a little more expensive. And yeah, the grocery stores have picked up on that, and people are willing to pay more for better food. But you know, define better food. Yeah. It's like you can make good choices. Like hamburger. Yeah. Right. Is better food. Than a box of cereal. 100%. Uh, and I'm talking like, not even the quote unquote good hamburger, the 80 yeah. 20, the yeah, 70 the, the, 30. The little chubs that you can get. Yeah, the 70 chubs. 30, which, which is not that expensive. Yeah. I'd rather see people just feed their kid hamburger yeah. all day long than Pop Tarts and cookies. Well, and chicken's cheap enough too. Yeah, you know, you know, the Chicken's price of food is coming down. Like, you know, we there are a lot of people who will condemn the food industry due to the mass production of animal food you know meats uh but at the same time we're able to feed a lot of people a lot of meat yeah and we can be very healthy in a hurry um as well you know it's there's a lot of foods out there we that we think are healthy we talked about this our last episode that yeah we can shovel a lot of quote-unquote fresh fruits and vegetables into our body but is it bioavailable to us you know especially fruit or or we just put a bunch of sugar in our body and not being careful um, whereas we know what meat does to us, we yep. know how the meat's good for us. So, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't really buy it that eating healthier is that much more expensive. I, I would agree with you. I don't either. I'm just working in a grocery store too, I, I know for a fact it's not. I mean, a lot of the meat prices are getting driven down, like you said. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. And you know what? You enough. can you can eat healthy at a fast food restaurant. Yeah, not, I don't even buy that. There, there's more options now. I mean, all you got to do is ask for no bun on. You know, I mean, you know, I, I've I've gone to Hardee's. I'll be the first to admit I've gone to Hardee's, yeah. and I ask, I said, "Give me a a a bacon, uh, a chicken deluxe, and do it in a lettuce wrap." Yeah. Okay. A lot of places are offering that now. You know, there's options. easy. There, there's there's lots of options. Yeah. You know, so it's not like, you know, you don't have to get the pop. You can get a, um, I get a, I get iced tea. Yeah. No sugar. Or just a cup for water. Unsweetened iced tea. You don't have to get the fries. Yeah, you don't have to get the fries. They even have healthy options, you know, other than fries, you know. So it's doable, but it's just a matter you got to want to do it. Yep. Take the time to do a little research and take the time to want to do it. You know, so I guess guess what I would say to parents out there is, you know, by no means am I telling people how to parent. I don't want to do that at all. But at, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, what do you put in front of your kid? 
Like, I get it. Some days you're in a rush. I understand convenience as much as anybody. Now, I get it. And some days I'll break down and my son will want, can we just get some chicken McNuggets? I'm like, okay, let's let's just do it. But by no means is that a regular occurrence at all. You got to teach them that that's a... An earned thing. They can't have it yeah. all the time. And, and as much as, and my, my kids are not overweight. They're they're yeah. not obese by any stretch of the imagination. But even even then, I don't. They don't eat as healthy as I would like them to. Right. But at least you teach and promote it with them. Well, you know, you know I, you I try get to, them to understand it. I try to lead by example. Yeah. I try to eat as healthy as I can. And I'm not saying I deny myself. I'll eat some right. pie. I'll eat some ice cream. But, but it's not every day. Yeah. There's there's a difference though of and you know getting to enjoy it every once in a while than having it every day. You know, yeah. you, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I find it hard to believe when people say, I don't know what healthy eating is. When I give presentations, I just did this the other day. We had a group of people come in and I have a little slideshow. I said, okay, let's play a game. And I'll just put start putting pictures of food up. And I'll say, you tell me good or bad. That's all I want to hear. <laughs> good or bad. Right. And, and I'll put a picture up of a hamburger. They say bad. French fries. They say bad. Salmon pops up. They go good. The apple pops up. They say good. A cupcake pops up. They say bad. Um, broccoli bro- pops up. They say good. And I'll stop it. I go, you seriously don't know how to eat well? <laughs> and like the shock on their face is like, oh yeah. my gosh. They know People know the difference between what, right and wrong. Yeah. And what's good and what's bad. It, when it comes to food. So, so it's, it's like, it's, tell me, I don't know what to eat. Like you're out of your mind. Yeah. You, you can't sit there and have any any lick of common sense. Any Anybody above... An elementary school level education can tell you the difference between what food is good and what food yep. is bad in, in, in general terms. There's no way you can tell me you don't know how to eat good. Basic decisions is all you got to do. You just don't want to. Yeah. Right? And that's fine. If you don't want to as an adult, if that's you don't decision. want to, that's your decision. Yes. But why would, you, why would you condemn your child to that? Yep. They don't have a choice in it. So that's they not, don't. That's not fair. Now, don't be a hypocrite and make your make your you make your child eat you know plain chicken and broccoli while you're crushing a double whopper <laughs> right. with cheese or whatever. Like, okay, that's not right yeah. either. Lead by example. Yeah. Lead by example. Lead by, I mean, it, it's much, obviously it's much easier if the kid yeah. sees you do that. Yeah. You know, and then you're not being neglectful anymore. But I, I just you know you, you see kids and you're just like, wow, I feel so bad for them. Like. They don't realize how unhealthy they are. Yeah. Like they don't realize. They know they feel bad. They know they look different. They but, know they can't play with the other kids or they can't keep up with the other kids in sports. Like they, they know those things. Like they know the effect. They don't know why. And the, the sad thing is they think that's everyday life. You know, because that's what they know. They, they don't know. think they know, right? That, they, that's what they, they know is everyday life. They know, And our schools aren't helping at all. No, not at all. I don't know. I, I had an issue. We had an, we our kids were in an after school program, and they would give them a quote unquote snack, and I was just like, "You go in there and pop some, and gushers." Uh, oh, well, it, it's like you know, it's like pop tarts, it's like it's milk and cookies, Jeez. or it's like uh, you know, it's just junk. So once in a while they get a granola bar in there, but we know that's just sugar anyway. Yeah. And I actually uh, sent the note to the director. I said, "Hey." Uh, I, I, your program is great. I love what you do with the kids. I understand it's hard. I was like, can we get some better food choices for the kids? I feel like they're getting a lot of sugar. And well, you know, we know it's very hard, but we, you know, we we're open to suggestions. I'm like, what? Open to suggestions. What, what do you want me to say? Like, yeah. how do you not know that orange drink and pop tarts? Yeah is not a good choice. Like, how do you not know that? That baffles my mind. Do you got to go in there and show them the pictures? Well, the I, I, you know, I made a suggestion. Like, right hey, I can say, hey, I know it's tough, but it, there, there's a lot of healthier choices. I'd rather see you put some carrots and celery yeah. out there for the kids. Like, I understand putting broccoli out there isn't going to win win any right. favors, but you, you can get away from the processed foods. Go you get know, a mixed veggie tray from the store. I mean, and, there, and there's places where you can buy stuff in mass quantity that yeah. make it much, much cheaper. Like, there are companies out there that do that for restaurants yeah. where you can buy in quantity, right? But I, I promise you that if... If, the, if you stop putting the sugary choices for the kids and all you do is put some healthier choices, they'll eat it. Yeah, eventually they'll, they'll, they'll get hungry. Yeah. They'll eat it. And then and, they won't want those sugary options. Anymore. Well, I mean, or they'll start packing their lunch. Yeah. But then it's on the then it's on the parents. Yeah. Right? But I, I got an issue where I'm paying you to watch my kid, but I'm also paying you to put crap in front yeah. of them. 
that bothered me a little bit. But when I, when, I su- when I suggested to them, hey, can we get some healthier options? Like they had no concept of what a healthier option would be. And I was like, how do you not know that? That, that, that baffles me. That really does. I mean, I get me. it. It needs to be cost effective, but that's, right, you but can make that happen. there's enough places out there to make that happen. Like you, you said. Can, you can make that happen. Yeah. You know, I, even if you just put, in, you know, little packs of nuts out there, little packs of peanuts, I would rather see than Pop Tarts. God, I'm sure they could go up to High V and have them cut up some vegetables and stuff for them. Well, especially for schools. There's yeah. programs out there where I know companies like High V, they don't necessarily need to donate, but I'm sure they yeah. can come up with a program where you're buying, you're buying, you know, pallets of peanuts oh, yeah. at, at a very discounted rate for the school. Yeah. They, you know they can, they mean? can figure something out and make it work. And there's I'm grants sure. and stuff out there oh, yeah. that can pull that. I don't know. That's that's where um, it, it boggles my mind. Where they said they what's a healthier option? Well, and and true, and you understand too that the the push to clean up food in schools took a wrong turn when they started just looking at calorie restriction rather yeah. than quality of food. Yeah. You know, for for crying out loud, they consider pizza as a vegetable because of the tomato sauce on it. <laughs> French fries are considered a vegetable, oh, which that's... technically they are. I get it, but it's yeah. like so now kids can roll out with a. A tray with a carton of milk, two corn dogs, and French fries, and that's considered a balanced meal. That's because wild. it falls underneath the calorie count. It's like, what What did you just give that kid? Yeah. You know, And we wonder why obesity is following them all the way through high school. It's like, well, all right, duh. Yeah, look, they got to look at it differently, definitely. Get and the vending machines have garbage food. in them, and yep. it's just, I don't know. But, but, it, but it's a learned trait. Like, they don't know that they've been told from day one corn dogs are okay. Yep. Corner's okay. Pop's okay to drink all day, every day. God, I remember you know, in high school, we had pop machines everywhere in the school. Oh, yeah. We did. I don't remember. In, in our in our cafeteria, we did, yeah, for sure. We had them in the hallways, up and down them. No kidding. Yeah, I mean, we could in between classes, we could stop at the pop But when you were in high school, energy drinks were loud and proud. They weren't around when I was in school. Uh, they're Not like they are now, but We they, had they Jolt. Were. Jolt was the Jolt. big thing. <laughs> Every time you drank once, people threw up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Loaded with sugar and like 10 times the caffeine of anything else. Joel. I remember uh, this clear as day when I was, uh, I started in karate when I was in sixth grade. And working my way up through the belts, uh, you kind of just as, as, which happens in most traditional karate schools and, and taekwondo schools and like that, usually when people start together, if they if they stay in it, they will tend to promote together. Right? right. So there's always like, especially with kids, you just kind of work your way up through the ranks yep. together. And it was me and these handful of other kids that just worked our way up through the ranks. And I remember the one kid uh, we were, we were testing. We were like red belt. Like our, our our belt system went like from red belt to like a dark blue belt and a black belt. So we were kind of getting up okay, there, yeah. right? It was like it was like we were getting ready to be big time, right? <laughs> you know, we're like in junior high, and. Uh, so he had a big test coming up, and he, he said, I'm gonna, I need some energy. So he drank a jolt Oof. before this test, mm. and it was a pretty tough test, and you had to get in a circle. We had multiple attacks. People ran at you with shield, and you know, I'll do these exercises. And right in the middle of it, you could see he was making that vomit motion. He put his <laughs> hand over his mouth, and uh, our, our sensei uh, at the time just motioned for him to go, and he ran into the bathroom and just let loose <laughs> right in the middle of the oh. test. I've never had energy like, drink do oh, that before. Oh no, that's funny. I I will say this: I did one time uh, before a fight. I did actually take an energy drink just before I sat down with the doctors. Probably one of the biggest mistakes I should. So have you ever just done. you just came off a whole month with no energy drinks. I did. Now, do you, do you crave them or do you not even want them anymore? Uh, I've actually I had one just to see um, if I even wanted it anymore, and I've had just that one, and that was it. Now so. did it just. Did, how did the caffeine effect? Did it have like a renewed effect on you? Uh, no, it was it was bad. I felt like my heart was gonna explode. <laughs> and yeah, I, yeah, that's what I mean. It, like it, it, I just it, I didn't even drink the whole thing. I think I only had half of it. That's funny. And yeah, so. I so don't you know. think you stay off of it? Do yeah, you think? I think yeah. I'm gonna, I'm definitely pushing for it. Yeah. You know what, what's so. amazing is a lot of people will. Um, and I'm not I'm not saying you should drink energy drinks. You you should or you shouldn't. It's up to you. You know. But a lot of them now are, are sugar free, so people will rationalize that they're not. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're good for you, but they're just not bad for you yeah. at this point. And a lot of them have tons of vitamins in them, tons of supplements that are that are good for you. 
uh, yeah. supplements, I mean. Yeah. But then you look at, okay, what else is in it? Yeah. And then you start to break it down. You go, well, maybe this ain't the best delivery system. <laughs> then you got to wonder how much caffeine's in them now because some of them are, oh you know, 300, gosh. 400 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, in big and, time. And, 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 you know. Which an average cup of coffee is, what, 70 to 90? Yeah. So, so you know, you're getting three, 400 milligrams of caffeine. You're talking like... What is that? Four, five, six cups of coffee Easy. now. You're and going, some people are drinking Holy. multiple a day. <laughs> some people like you. Well, used to. <laughs> once used upon to. a time. <laughs> once upon a time. But I see people come in and buy cases of that bang. And that's 300 milligrams a can. Yeah. And they come in probably every two, three days and buy that's a That's almost four cups of coffee per yeah. can right there. So. That's, uh. So. Well, I mean, it's, it, I get, it's, I mean, it's It's no their worse. choice. Sure. You know? I mean, they're right. adults. I mean, so, caffeine is very addictive. I know people yeah. get bad headaches when you try to get off of it. I <laughs> drink coffee yeah, now. I, I, I haven't had any energy drinks uh, for quite a while. Once in a while, I'll sip on one. Uh, but I, I, I've turned to coffee a little bit. I'll have a couple cups of coffee in the morning, um, mostly through the Bulletproof. But I'm not sure that uh, I, I replaced the amount of caffeine. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I, mean, I think it was a positive I gotta, choice. i got to look at trying to get into the Covfefe, I think. I need to start finding some... Some way of that. I, I've I've, I've gotten down where I'll I'll drink one, but now my don't my my coffee mug or what do you want to call it my tumbler holds four cups, <laughs> so sixteen ounces, right? So it holds sixteen ounces. So whatever you consider a cup of coffee, yeah. it holds sixteen ounces of Covfefe in a bulletproof. So and I, I've been putting uh, the keto meal. Uh, we have the supplement keto meal that we put in, um, which is basically just powdered butter and powdered yeah, I egg. That's delicious though. Um, so I, I do that instead of making cutting up butter and putting in the MCT oil. It's just, it's just faster for me, and, and it tastes good. Uh, but th- that's all I have, really. I, mean, I might maybe have a cup or two after that, depending on what I'm yeah. doing that day. Uh, but after that... See, I don't know. Maybe if I tried something like that, maybe it would taste a little better to me. I don't know. All I've ever tried is like straight black. I tried to get my neighbor so. to to try it, and she said she almost vomited. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> I remember you. Yeah, you gave her some that one. Yeah. Okay. So I got I got to get back and ask and see how she made it to make sure because <laughs> you got to blend. Vomited. If you don't blend it, it can get chunky on yeah. you, which which is kind of gross. That's a that's mm. a texture thing that yeah. I get it. Like when you got like chunks of stuff floating in your coffee that'd be me. i could see how that doesn't want to go down right i have big texture issues when it comes to food <laughs> i do that's like i can't eat hummus see i can't i can i can eat hummus like all the day texture long. I like hummus. hummus does something to me yeah. i don't know what it but is but like i can't i can't do peppers or onions because of the texture really yeah like raw or cooked both really yeah i just i can't i don't know what it is the texture so you can't eat anything with peppers or onions on it uh-uh. wow so but hummus i'll eat that all day long I don't know how much just I don't know like the, I think the first time I had it just looked like snot to me I don't know <laughs> I don't know what it was and the texture just I don't know it was just a combination of things that just didn't do well for me but that that could be just me yeah I probably it's just me more than likely but I don't know I kind of blame my mom on my my food issues of when I was younger trying to force me to eat stuff like that when well I, didn't I like it. you know I, you know, I grew up in a household where you know it was traditional American diet you just ate whatever was put in yeah. front of you and then of course. My parents split up when I was young. I was in third grade. And then we moved in with my grandmother, my dad and myself, my younger brother. So my Italian grandmother, you know, we had some type of pasta or noodles shoved in front of us and bread constantly. And my dad, which God bless him, hindsight, he was he was spot on. It was whole milk, real butter in the house. He wouldn't allow anything other <laughs> in the house. That's so good. I was like, all right, well, now hindsight doesn't make sense. But he was also hamburgers, french fries, yeah. and... Of course, my grandmother would just, if she found that we liked something, we would get it multiple times a week just because <laughs> it was all about filling the belly. Like, I remember one time that I had said I liked Hamburger Helper, which original Hamburger Helper, I still, to this day, I think is fabulous. Original. Original. Keyword, cheeseburger. Original. The cheeseburger. Yeah. Hamburger Cheeseburger Helper, right? <laughs> and uh, so, it w- I would get that once a week, at least, <laughs> because, you know, she was all about, she was the type, she was old school. She was yeah. all about providing for her family. She was about making sure the family was fed. And so I would come home from school after football practice. There would be a pot of hamburger helper. And I would crush it, mm. right? But it was kind of like, okay, hamburger helper again. Yeah. <laughs> but in her mind, it was like, well, you, you said you liked it, yeah. so I'm going to make it for you. But, you know, she would also make us, you know, pot roast and cheese steaks mm. and, you know, all that stuff. But um, now she lived, check this out, she lived to be 100, almost 103. Wow. And uh, she drank like a half a cup of beer every day. 
<laughs> that's funny. I've, and, I've heard and, people and say garbage about beer that. too. Garbage and there's a lot of there's a lot of research that says a little bit of alcohol yeah. every day is very good for you. But um, yeah, so she she's living proof of that. What do, what do you mean by garbage beer? What kind of beer? It was like Schlitz. Oh. And, sh- and and there's a brand back east called Schmitz as well. <laughs> that just sounds horrible. Yeah, just just not good, not good beer at all. Off brand of Schlitz. It's uh, <laughs> the lower. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't argue with it, right? Hey, you can't. be 103. I mean, like, who am I to say yeah. don't drink Schlitz? I'm yeah. like, well, something. Now, towards the end of her life, she didn't eat much meat because uh, of her dentures. She didn't have any teeth. So she she Lord couldn't she it. couldn't chew uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff. So she but I mean I never saw her not I never saw her turn it away. But she would always eat like a lot of noodles, things that could you know she could chew easy, yeah. and things like that. So in that respect, her diet. But she never ate much. You know she was I mean she was only like four foot ten. Oh wow! <laughs> she was tiny, <laughs> tiny little Italian lady. But man, she could make a meatball. Oh my god! Mm. Uh, I bet it was those. fresh homemade too from scratch. And you know what she would do? She would uh, save the ends of loaves of bread and, and keep them in a bag in the drawer and they would get hard and stale and that's what she would use in the meatballs really as filler so she would break up the bread and then pour some water on it to make it soft again and then mix that in with the meat and make and make it use it as filler her meatballs were awesome stale bread old, old school italian trick that's right the there. way stale bread yeah. all the ends no one wants to eat the ends anyway no right <laughs> so she would always ends. have you'd pull out the bread drawer we always had a bread drawer there would be a bag of ends, of <laughs> bread ends in there, right? That's funny. That she'd be collecting for when she would make meatballs. It's hilarious. Hey, at least she had a way to repurpose them. Well, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, no that's doubt. That's awesome. And to this day, I don't know if anybody likes to eat the ends. No. Uh, no, on fresh bread, like like fresh bread, bakery bread. Oh, like, like, if I go straight to the Rotella's factory and get it. The yeah. end is awesome. Oh, yeah. like, I love, like, hy Some of the hy have awesome bakeries. Not all of them, though. I don't know why that is. Uh, it's... Uh... It's like the one out on uh, 108th and Q, awesome bakery. And yeah, I love the ends of those breads because that's where, for me, there's like a lot of flavor. I don't know what it is, the fresh baked bread, not not the sliced Quality bread. Quality people, people who care about what they're doing. My in-laws live like a block away from Rotella. Oh, I, I live right down the street. So they'll go up there too because they got that. I don't realize they have a little storefront yeah. in there. Well, that place is so you busy. You get a loaf of bread time. for like what, 50 cents? Uh, I think cheaper than that. Stupid. It's ridiculous. Now, it's, at my understanding, it's day old though. Like it's everything uh, that didn't I, sell. Yes. yes, I believe. I mean, it's. I mean, it's still, still fresh. I mean, a day old. Yeah, but it's everything that they took off the shelves because they pride themselves on having always having a fresh bread on the store shelves. Yeah, we we get shipments every day. So the so they'll take the stuff that didn't sell and then sell it for like yep. fifty cents in there. Yeah, fresh stuff every day. So it's a, great. Day old bread, but I love waking know. up to the smell of that Rotella's factory. Oh my gosh, work. it's great. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine. Mm-hmm. We used to, in my dad's restaurant, I grew up working in my dad's bar and grill, and we used to get fresh rolls for our cheese sticks, and we would go to a specific bakery and get them. I used to love going with them because they would always give us like a loaf of twisted bread, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, fresh. It was still warm and just melt in your mouth. So good. Nothing better than fresh baked goods. I do, I do like bread. bread. And bread's such, you know, I try not to eat a lot of it because I try to stay pretty ketogenic in my diet. I try to stay away from breads, but you put fresh bread and butter in front of me. <laughs> oh, and I don't even like slicing. I just grab chunks and pull it off, That's the, and, and, and dip it in the in the butter. Mm. I just I just mm. I'll just slide it right. I'm through, not mad at you for that. Right through the butter little jar and just and just crush it. Oh. And I was like, oh man, I love it. I, love I can it. do that too. Good deal. All right, guys. That's about all the time we have today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, you parents out there, again, we're not trying to tell you how to parent. We're just trying to help you, you know, set your kids on the right path, put some good food in front of them, and don't set them up for failure later on in life. But you're listening to Treadmills and Tangents right here on The Answer, 94.5 FM, 1420 AM. Check us out on Facebook. Check out our website. We're always posting good stuff and good articles, and, and our latest shows are always out there. So we'll see you next weekend. When you walk into Mid-American Martial Arts, you're walking into more than punching and kicking. You're walking into a community, and that is what I think sets us apart from everybody else. We train anywhere from four years old, uh, and we have students as old as in their 60s here. Our main programs are Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai Kickboxing, Judo, as well as our Strength and Conditioning Program, which is our Training for Warriors program. 
Our main goal is that when people leave here, they feel better about themselves. You know, they're a little bit better as a person, they feel a little bit about their life, they feel better about their day. Now, everybody holds baggage, everybody has stress. This is the place where they can come in and put all that away for a little bit and work on themselves. Yeah, do we hope they can defend themselves better? Sure. Do we hope they can punch and kick a little better? Absolutely. None of that matters if they don't feel good about themselves. And that's the main key. If they can walk out of here feeling good about themselves, feeling good about their life, then, then we've won that day.